All right, something a lot of people don't think of is actually the penetrations through your ceiling. All right, the biggest and most, most notorious culprit is the uh, hi hat legs. All right, because they're penetrating through your insulation barrier. So if you have R30 up in the ceiling, it's actually penetrated through the entire 11 inches, you know? Um, so another thing that people don't think about is to get the fire rated hi-hats. A lot of times you just have regular hi-hats and that means that up in the attic, you can't put anything right on top of the hi-hats. All right, um, the only thing that you can do with a non-fire rated hi-hat is you can build a box or you know around uh, the hi hat up in the attic uh, within the combustible distance. You know, what I mean, it has to be so if it says one inch clearance from combustibles, you have to be you know you go one and a half inches, build a box, and then insulate all around that. The other thing you can do is buy the fire rated covers that go over top of them up in the attic, and then you can put your insulation up against that. But if you have the fire rated ones, then it seems that you can go ahead and put your insulation up against them, but you just want to make sure that you're safe, you know. Um, but the other thing is the non-fire rated ones, they all have holes that go up into the, uh, up into the attic. So you, have, so you have direct air exchange between your house, uh, the inside uh, conditioned air area, and the attic non-conditioned air area. All right, so let's just take a peek at this. Taking that part down. The power is off to this light, you see now. Right. As you can see, this one right here is solid aluminum all the way in the top and to the sides. All right, so this one's an energy code approved um, uh, hi hat. All right, and there's no holes penetrating up into the attic, but a lot of them you're going to find have holes penetrating up into the attic, just a direct air exchange. That's no good at all. All right, um, but uh, you know, you have to read up on this stuff and see which hi hats you have. If you can put insulation right on top of it, or if you can't, um, because that would be a dangerous situation. All right, but anyway, um, that's a couple things to think about. All right, so. You go out from the clearance to combustible, so if it says one inch, you go an inch and a half, put your box together, and then put some insulation on top of that. Uh, but also, you see right here, once again, direct air exchange up into the attic. Um, you want to take precaution just about because of the amount of heat uh, produced in this area. So you want to go ahead and seal that up properly as well. Um, but if you seal it up with the wrong product, that would cause a fire, and that's no good. All right. Um, but anytime you have an electrical box or anything, um, you know, you can use some spackle. Spackle will be great right in here, okay? That would be better than any type of uh, silicone or something uh, because this is, you know, sheetrock and spackle uh, will technically be the same thing. So if you just had some spackle and you just rubbed it right along in here, uh, that, would, that would be a good thing. All right, you can also use a fire-rated caulk. Fire-rated caulk will be great in here, and that would uh, seal it up right in here and then you wouldn't have to worry about the, the heat as much. But every single electrical box that's cut in the ceiling, like uh, smoke detectors and things like that, you know, you want to seal all of them up. If it's a uh, heating and cooling register uh, in, the, in the ceiling, especially if it's a uh, double five eighths, meaning a one hour fire rating, you're going to want to put that fire caulk in there to meet the boot, the metal boot to the register. All right, so I just want you to be aware of these things. All right, so here we have an attic entrance, whether that's pull-down steps or uh, just maybe a two-foot by two-foot attic entrance, all right? Um, but as you can see, this has some give in it, which means that it's not sealed completely tight, all right? So um, there's not much you're going to do about adjusting the attic steps, per se, to make this part seal, unless maybe you try to put some type of a weather stripping or something in the area, but it's very hard to, uh, to get all that to... Uh, stay tight but if you were to do that what you need to do is you need to go up into the attic close the attic steps you know have somebody downstairs to pull the attic steps back down for you but you add weather stripping with the door shut so you know exactly where all of this 
hangling falls, you know, meaning like where it stops that up in the attic. All right, so that's one thing that you can do. Um, another concern is uh, the actual ceiling of the trim. So right here, right along this, all right, right where the outside trim meets the inside trim at, and then also along the edges where the sheet rock meets the trim. So you want to make sure that that's all sealed up very well. So if you use caulk, uh, you want to make sure that you paint over caulk because caulk tends to uh, peel if you don't end up painting over it. So you know you caulk it, you let it dry, you paint over it, uh, and that tends to help seal that in unless you're using like a really, really good grade of, uh, of caulk. But you want to make sure that there's something that's paintable. All right, you can make it a foam board box, all right? So this is up inside the attic steps, all right, up inside the frame. You can actually buy one four foot by eight foot sheet of uh, two inch foam board, all right, with the foil face. The foil face is the key because with the foil face, you can actually tin tape it, you know, in the corner. So you have the inside corners, all those, and then you have the outside corners up in the attic. And then the other thing that you can do, you notice that this is two inch foam board, but you only see about an inch and a quarter here. You can actually cut a lip so that it actually has to fit down inside and along the top here of the board so that this foam board actually comes down into it and it meets it meets and there's more uh, surface area where the foam board is attached at uh, inside here and it's just like form fitted all right so you can actually just push it up and you're up in there so then you can actually see uh, where the foam board was actually cut out at all right and then when you're ready to put it back in you just pull it right down and it fits just snug all right, there's a bunch of different ways of doing that, uh, but that's just one. All right, so all these things that I'm showing you, I want you to picture, it's like thinking about like detailing a car. Every little thing that you do is going to help the house, uh, help the building, and you're gonna lower the energy consumption. So after you seal up all of the ceiling areas, you know, you make sure that you have the proper insulation up in the attic, um, you seal your doors, seal your registers in the floor, you know, or any other things uh, that may be uh, allowing air to come in at, you know, it may not make a huge difference when you just do one little one, all right? But when you do a bunch of them, that's what's going to end up really reducing the energy consumption. And especially in the circumstance of a heating cooling system that's just right on the verge of working, meaning that um, the installer, install one that might be a little bit too small, if you do these corrections to the building, then that system will then work properly. All right, so instead of selling somebody a whole new system, you could reduce the energy consumption on the building. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.